guys you're welcome back hope you guys are feeling good my name is Bukumi Bike Kran thank you so much for clicking so this Muslim scholar is going to be explaining to us why women are not being oppressed in Islam let's check it out not like the female the male is not like the female this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us brothers and sisters Dear guests, the male is not like the female. Science tells us, reason tells us, experience tells us, and Allah reminds us. Men and women are different. different. So it is the society that oppresses women is a society that takes women away from their nature. A society that tells women that being a mother that being a, uh, the housekeeper, that the one who is doing perhaps one of the most essential jobs in society is a degrading position. Mm. They talk about it. She's chained to the kitchen sink like she's some slave, like it's some menial task. And rather the woman who is honored is what? The actress, the model, the super businesswoman. And the more clothes she takes off, the more honored she is. Mm. Mm. This is the woman they honor in this society. The career woman, the politician, the woman who's a doctor, the woman who's this and who's that. Look at her, how successful she is, how independent she is. And anyone who stays at home, looking after the children, oh, look at that poor little mm. thing. Society. Look at her. So oh. Kind of things. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's true. This is a society that oppresses women. And you know what? You see it everywhere. You see miserable women. Women who've reached 35 years old. And they're desperate to have kids. Suddenly it hits them. Suddenly their nature overtakes them. And now what do we find? In order to overcome this, science comes in. They've introduced this intro, intro viral, I can't remember what it's, uh, intro viral fertilization and women are being fertilized when they don't even, they're not even capable of producing eggs anymore. Mm. But they get fertilized and they're having children at 40, at 50 because they missed out because of the pressure society put on them. This is oppressing women. This is taking women away from her nature. This is her making her feel inadequate if she is a mother and if she is a wife and she is a homekeeper, she is made to feel inferior. That is oppression. Mm. It is a society that treats women as a commodity. As a commodity. That is a society that oppresses and denigrates women. It is an evil and unjust and tyrannical society. Do not be confused, my brothers and sisters, in Islam. Do not be confused. Do not be taken in by their propaganda. Do not be influenced by their lies. And believe me, they have sown the seeds of their own destruction. They have sown the seeds of their own destruction. And you see it. Because who is looking after the kids? Who gives the kids the love and the care and the attention that they need? Who is there to teach the kids the morality? Right from wrong. Manners. You know who it is? MTV. PlayStation. Because mummy is out working along with daddy. Huh? And who else is looking after the children? Who is looking after them? Can anyone look after a child like the mother? No. And so you find children coming with no morals, no concept of right and wrong, violence, sex, drugs, music, fantasy is the norm for them. That is the norm for them. And love, they haven't found love in the home. So what do they do? They join gangs. That's what they do. They join gangs. They look for it somewhere. If they can't find it in the home, they'll try to find somewhere to belong. It's happening in America. It happens in England. I'm sure it happens here in Australia. Kids on the street. Doing all sorts of things. Why? Because there was no one who nurtured them. They are sowing the seeds of their own destruction. They have already done it. And now they are reaping the evil rewards of their evil philosophy 
and their injustice and their tyranny and they blame us and they point the finger at us they point the finger at Islam they are the guilty ones they are the oppressors they are the tyrants they are one, the ones who have degraded women and taken them from their nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them for in which they should feel pride look what Islam teaches my brothers and sisters Look at the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The women, woman is honored in Islam. The woman is honored, revered in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, reverence Allah and the wombs that bore you. Reverence Allah and the wombs that bore you. No, Islam honors women. For what Allah has created her for, for her nature. It honors her for what is her nature. And that is giving someone their rights. That is giving someone their rights. And that is why Allah made men the maintainers and protectors of women. They are the glass vessels. The best of you are the ones who are best to their wives. The best of you are the ones who are best to their wives. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught. How far unfortunately many Muslims are from the commands of Allah, from the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no doubt that there are many Muslims who are abusive and tyrannical and who do oppress their women. But that's not Islam. Islam is not responsible for that any more than Islam is responsible for a Muslim who drinks alcohol or takes drugs or kills innocent human beings. Islam is free from that. Islam teaches us to honor women, to respect them, but for their nature. The best of you are those who are best to their wives. And of course the Prophet ﷺ was the one who is best to their wives. And Allah has made men the maintainers and protectors of women. They are the glass vessels. They are delicate. They are sensitive. They need to be treated with care and with love and with patience. Allah has given them a certain nature. A certain nature, they need that nature in order to be able to look after the children. You could never do it brothers, never. But that nature means that there is something about them. They have certain emotions, they have certain emotional responses that they need those responses to deal with the important task of raising the children. And that means you have to deal with them, brothers, in a certain way. You have to be patient with them. There are certain things that happen to them at a certain time of the month. And it means that sometimes they behave in quite a crazy way. And, but they need that. That's the way Allah created them. Those chemicals are there for a reason. It happens for a reason. And we should honor that. This is Allah's creation. Perfect creation, perfect at doing what Allah intended it to do. And we have to respect that. They are glass vessels. Treat them with kindness. Treat them with softness. Leave them the way they are. You enjoy women the way they are. The Prophet told us, enjoy them. Enjoy them the way they are. With this bentness, this 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 way that they are, but enjoy them. Because if you try to straighten them, you'll never be able to do it. And the straightening of it, in fact, will be divorce. You are trying to change Allah's nature that He created. Don't do it. Enjoy them the way they are. It is part of their beautiful quality that makes the women the, 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 the thing that we love. And especially the righteous women. About whom? The Prophet ﷺ said, the whole world is green and verdant. But the most precious thing in this dunya, and subhanallah, wallahi, that is the truth. The Prophet always spoke the truth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most precious thing in this dunya is a righteous woman. There is nothing better and nothing more precious in this world than a righteous woman. And whoever marries a righteous woman, inshallah will succeed. Whoever marries a woman for just her beauty or just her wealth 
or her lineage, what will you get? Believe me, misery. Marry the righteous one. Marry the pious one. Marry the religious one and be successful. This is the nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. This is the path to a beautiful and successful society. It is the foundation of it. Islam recognizes it. Confucianism recognized it also. In fact, every sensible society knows that the very foundation of society is the family. And at the heart of every family is the woman who teaches and cares and nurtures for the children. So we honor her. Islam teaches us to honor her, to respect her as our mother, to revere her. And they say that Islam does not give women their rights. And they say that Islam oppresses women. Wow, guys. So this man made a lot of points. Like, I could really relate to everything he said. I know you, we, me and you can relate to everything. So he's trying to explain to us why Islam does not oppress women. Islam is the society that oppresses women. Because society now has this mindset that how can a woman become an housewife? Why will a woman be be at home all day to take care of her children that means yes she's been oppressed that means the the man is being controlling men have to work so as a woman you have to you know create time for your children even though you want to go to work that's why it's good for a wife to have her own personal work in which she can have time for the child you know that's why you see that a lot of career women a lot of women that are always busy chasing work 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 and not paying attention to their children their children live some kind of lifestyle that it's not proper they live in appropriate lifestyle so the society is the one oppressing women because everybody is you know making it sound as if you being an housewife is is, is a sin is 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 evil is bad that means the man is maltreating you he's not giving you the right to do things they, and they're not saying well, you should not work but there's a work that as a woman earliest two three four you should be able to close so i can pick your child don't be a woman that your husband will be at work from morning to night and you too you go to work from morning to night how will your children get your attention and when they don't get your attention they can't get it elsewhere like the man said so it's the society that is oppressing the women not islam oppressing the women so you know it's Speaking of this, based on the fact that people always say that because of the way Muslim women wear hijab, that means they are being oppressed. And he said, no, they are not being oppressed. That's why equality, people will say we want equality. But there's nothing like equality among men and women. You know, the, what a man can do is different from what a woman can do. A man is meant to work. Yes, a woman is meant to support. And the, the only way a child can grow well is through the mother. So if women, you know, all becomes career women in this society in this world how will the children grow so indirectly it's trying to tell us that you know islam is not oppressing women their husbands are not oppressing them by them wearing their hijab no they are doing it out of their own will and that's what is trying to let us understand where the oppression is coming from because oppression has been there from the society not from the religion islam wow that was a beautiful one i really enjoyed this message let me know your point of view guys let's keep this discussion going thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye